Hello everyone, I am Matteo Frigo and in this talk I will expose a systematic bias that we identified regarding the modeling of tissue volume fractions via diffusion MRI. I will start by introducing what tissue microstructure is, then I will sketch some basic concepts of diffusion MRI that we will use to understand the difference between the concepts of signal fraction and tissue volume fraction, focusing on how these two are not equivalent in general. Finally, I will show you the model we proposed in the short paper, which solves this ambiguity, and I will make some final remarks on the impact of this new model on previous studies. So, when we observe the brain tissue microstructure, what we're looking for is some interpretable feature that carries some information about the local composition of the studied matter. For instance, in the white matter, we may want to inspect the local orientation or the distribution of the axonal diameters of the fiber bundles. Additionally, it can be interesting to know how much of a specific tissue there is in a specific location. In this case, we will be looking at the volume fraction of each tissue. And this is actually what we are going to look at in this study. On a side note, despite always referring to brain tissue microstructure, the whole talk still makes sense when we look at other data. But this is out to the scope, uh, this is out to the scope of this work. So the type of data that we are going to analyze comes from diffusion MRI specifically acquired with a pulsed gradient spin echo sequence. So this sequence allows to express the acquired signal as a product between an echo time dependent component and a gradient dependent component. These two factors carry information about the signal intensity and the signal shape respectively. The signal intensity is zero, roughly quantifies the volume of the acquired diffusion signal and depends solely on the echo time. Therefore, it does not depend on the diffusion phenomenon. On the contrary, the, the signal shape E depends uniquely on the diffusion parameters and it is normalized to be between 0 and 1. What we all have been doing in the last 20 years is to model the signal shape as a linear combination of the shapes of the components that we expect to find in the location we are looking at. These compartments usually depend on some parameters Pi and the fraction of signal explained by each compartment is denoted as Pi i. This concept of signal fraction is pivotal in the study, and we are going to analyze it more deeply in a few slides. So, our microstructural parameters will be the pi's and the phi i's. In order to fit them, we can retrieve uh, the signal shape E by dividing the acquired signal by the S0. Then we can use some mean square estimate to solve for, uh, for phi and for pi. Probably the simplest example of multi-compartment model is the stick and ball approximation that Berens showed in the seminal paper of 2003, where the anisotropic diffusion of the axonal compartment is modeled as a diffusion in a stick, while the isotropic diffusion of the extra axonal compartment is modeled as the diffusivity within a ball. The key operation that allowed us to define the multi compartment model of the signal shape was the normalization by the S0 where we divided the diffusion signal by its non-diffusion component, which is the S0 here. The assumption that we hide behind this operation is that the S0 of each compartment is the same. Now we're going to question this assumption and see if it actually holds true. So the density, the intensity of the S0 image is given by the displayed equation. If we focus on the last part, we notice the inverse proportionality with respect to the T2 time of the tissue. In the context of brain imaging, it is known that the T2 time of the cerebral of the white matter is higher than the T2 time of the cerebral spinal fluid. As a consequence, the S0 signal will be lower in the white matter than in the CSF. This means that our assumption that all compartments have the same S0 does not hold true. So you can see here an example of an axial slice of the S0 image of a healthy subject from the Human Connection Project database. Dark regions correspond to white matter, while white regions correspond to CSF. We can see how there is a factor of 4 between the S0 intensity in the white matter and the S0 intensity in the CSF. This confirms the theoretical observations we made in the previous slide, also from an empirical point of view. In order to correct for this effect, we propose a generalized tissue multi-compartment modeling formulation, which accounts for these differences in S0 intensity. The model is a very straightforward rewriting of the multi-compartment modeling where the explained signal is not normalized and the signal shape of each compartment is multiplied by its corresponding signal intensity as 0i. Notice that this formulation depends not only on the diffusion-related acquisition parameters, 
but also on the echo time, which gives the S0 contrast that we were looking for. A similar idea that inspired our work had already been used in the definition of the multi-tissue constrained, spheric constrained spherical deconvolution framework in the context of estimation of fiber orientation distributions in the paper of Jerison. The DMIPipe Toolbox is a Python package developed by members of our team that provides what I think is a very smooth diffusion microstructure imaging framework. The package includes a simple algorithm for fitting the volume fractions from multi-tissue multi-compartment models, which involves a two-step procedure, where initially we estimate the signal fractions pi i's and the nonlinear compartment specific uh, parameters pi. Then we fix the nonlinearities pi, we add the compartment specific S0 to the model, and we fit the volume fractions fi's. This second step is just a linear least squares problem for which we have all sorts of fast solvers. Notice that this procedure builds on top of the old single tissue multi-compartment modeling. Therefore, it can be straightforwardly applied to results uh, we already have. So, when we compare directly the standard and the multi-tissue formulations of multi-compartment models, we can notice that the signal shape of each compartment is multiplied by different quantities. For the standard multi-compartment model, the constant is the signal fraction of each compartment, while for the proposed multi-tissue multi-compartment model, we have the product between the S0 and the volume fraction of the compartment. Notice that these concepts of signal fraction and volume fraction are not interchangeable and they carry very different meanings. The first estimates how much of the signal shape is explained by the, comp by the compartment, while the second tells how much of the signal volume is occupied by the compartment. I will give you an example of how this works for a well known, uh, for a very well known multi-compartment model like Nodi, which is the Neurit Orientation Dispersion and Density Imaging Framework. Here, you can notice the anisotropic contribution of the intracellular and extracellular compartments convolved with a Watson distribution that accounts for the fiber dispersion, and the isotropic compartment uh, that is modeled as a ball. Each compartment is described as in the generalized tissue modeling framework. Therefore, it accounts for the volume fraction, the S0, and the signal shape. With the anisotropic compartments, we model the white matter, while the isotropic part accounts for the CSF, which means that we are actually modeling multiple tissues. We simulated the signal in 1000 voxels with the model of the previous slide, and we estimated the white matter and the intracellular volume fractions using data with different signal to noise ratios. Here we show the results obtained for an SNR equal to 20. We considered three use cases of the multi-tissue formulation of Nodi. The three tissues formulation considers one different S0 for each of the three compartments. The two tissues formulation instead considers only two different S0s, one for the white matter compartment and one for the CSF compartment. Finally, the one tissue formulation is mathematically equivalent to the classical formulation of Nodi. The plots show the distribution of the white matter volume fraction and the intracellular volume fractions in the ground truth data and for each used model. A good model is supposed to give a distribution which is similar to the one of the ground truth, which is reported in violet. What we observe is that the white matter volume fraction is correctly recovered both with the three tissues model and the two tissues model. On the contrary, the intracellular volume fraction estimation is not biased only if we use the three tissues model. Notice that while the three tissues formulation may be complicated to use due to the technical difficulty of estimating distinct as zeros for the intracellular and the extracellular compartments, the two tissues formulation is directly applicable from the available diffusion MRI data, thanks to some simple heuristic that can be extorted. In particular, the heuristic approach of Dolander can be used to estimate the S0 of the white matter and the CSF tissues, and that's what we used in this example, where a subject from the Human Connectome Project database was processed with the two, with the, with the two tissues modeling formulation. Well, you can notice immediately the qualitative difference between the two results from the maps on the left. On the right, instead, you can see the different distributions of the white matter signal fraction and the white matter volume fractions which confirms what we said before about them not being two interchangeable concepts. Well, with a joke, we can say that uh, it's, nice to, it's nice to see that uh, we're finally able to observe white matter in the white matter. So, what did we learn out of this study? Well, we understood the pivotal role of the S0 information in the estimation of volume fractions. 
The more information we have, the more accurate the result will be. We also learned that signal fractions and volume fractions are not the same thing, and the results obtained in previous and future studies must be reinterpreted taking into account this distinction. Finally, observing the behavior of the multi tissue nodding model, we can see how we can reach a compromise between number of compartments and number of considered as zeros that allows to obtain meaningful insights on the volume fraction of the white matter and CSF. This work was done within the framework of the Computational Brain Connectivity Mapping Project funded by the European Research Council. Data were provided by the Human Connectome Project and my co-first author, Radger Fick, is now employed by TerraPanacea. The whole study can be reproduced using codes available at the GitHub repository of the DMITI package and I would like to thank you for your attention.